gonna have a good week. Long as the Eagles lose, I'm still gonna have a good week. Everybody loses, I'm still having a good week. Cause we still in it by one game. God damn it. Jason fucking Garrett, seriously? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Exactly. But we actually had a good team. What? Oh, now, now you want to see, see the shit near us when he was old. When we were dealing with it all this damn time. How do you fucking call plays? I don't get this. Jason Garrett. Seriously, Jason Garrett. How do you fucking call plays? I was over there, I'm over here. Oh my god, I don't believe this right now. How do you feel about the team? Oh my god, like, it's Jason Gert! It's Jason Gert's fault! Like y'all been saying for 10 years. Jason Gert! How the fuck you call, uh, how do you call on 4th and 15, you call a 5 yard play? Then the next play, you go down, you call a 20 yard play, he hit the first down. Then you put Danny Dimes in the position to throw a fucking interception. Seriously? Run the goddamn ball or something to get the field. Or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to hell home. I'm going to hell home. We all go. You all lost. So don't get mad. Don't y'all can y'all can get pride in my jewel and my anger, but y'all lost too. Fuck no. Damn it. Shit. Fuck. Let's go home. <laughs> How in the hell the last four games, the last four games now, oh, three, three out of four, you're driving down the field near the end zone and you throw a goddamn interception every goddamn time. What the well, hell is that? We got, got all that time. Yeah, yeah. Now you see the What the hell is that? <laughs> what the hell? You call it payback is a mofo. How do you throw an interception? Payback. Every goddamn time. Hey man, how do you exactly? How did we get He's through all man of that? Eli Manda 2.0. Eli Manda 2.0. Jason Garrett 2.0. <laughs> what the bleep? What the bloody hell? The do an interception every. Oh, oh didn't I say that, brother? Now y'all, now you're reaping, reaping our back in the day benefits, I guess. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hold on for one moment. By now, I'm sure most of you guys have heard that one of our own, Rashid, has passed away. Um, it's uh, sad because part of life is death, and we continue to lose loved ones. And... Being 58 years old, I've gotten used to losing people, unfortunately, that I know rather well, that I grew up with and things. And I always end up doing my fireside chat and saying, tell the people you love, you love them, because you might not get the chance again. And um, Rashid's no longer with us. He definitely touched us in a lot of ways. He annoyed us. He trolled us. He made us laugh, and now he's making us cry. And so I salute you, buddy, and I know that you're now there with your mother in a better place. And when I have more from his family about uh, 
arrangements and things like that, I will let you guys know. Uh, just keep his family and things in your prayers and stuff. Um, she was too young to go. And I really got to know Rashid over the course of the last really three quarters of a year um, as he was going through um, hard times with the diabetes and things and has passed from complications of a multitude of things from the kidneys and uh, the diabetes and other things. And so he <laughs> definitely was the biggest giant fan that I've ever known. No matter what, no matter what, he stuck by his team. And you have to respect and love him for what he was. A true good friend and adversary of the Cowboys. Um, he passed uh, the day before yesterday. Um, so there we have it. Um, I don't want to get uh, like I was earlier today with him, uh, with, with it. Um, he'll be missed. How are you good people? The Dallas Cowboys. It's hard to talk about football when you lose friends. But unfortunately, time continues to go on no matter what. And um, we're in the middle of a playoff run. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool that at the moment we are eight and three. I'm old enough to remember we're going into the last game of the seasons three years in a row. We were eight and seven needing a win just to have a chance of making the playoffs and our team failed over and over and over again. And it's almost comical to me now because I remember a few weeks ago and saying to my man, game time, Brian, um, that I'd been tagged in a Twitter post about, um, how they couldn't enjoy a game because the Cowboys only beat bad teams. You know what? Life is too short to be upset and to waste your time with stupid shit. And that was one of those times that I definitely said, yeah, there's Brian. I was like, don't tag me. Hey, listen, it's like, people, if you want to be miserable, go be miserable by yourself. Don't try and make me miserable with you. I ain't got time for that. I got too many things I want to accomplish. And right now, you know, it's, it's really amazing that people take on the bullshit that you get from the talking heads that literally and Rashid was definitely one of those ones it was always funny because Rashid would always say well Dick Dax is a dink and dunker man he, he literally followed along with whatever the narrative was from ESPN man it gets all his yards and garbage time man I'll take Daniel Jones over Dak Prescott it's like bro Look at what you got. You know how everybody was literally saying Daniel Jones last year was a better quarterback than Dak Prescott? Remember the beginning of this season when people like Greg Jennings, a, a, you know, a former player, supposedly expert, said, I trust Daniel Jones more than Dak Prescott. Think about how many Dallas Cowboys supposed fans said, move on from Dak Prescott. He's not the guy. Well, I'm here to say, Screw you guys, you don't know shit. You don't know shit. You don't know shit. I sat here and I watched the Miami Dolphins Jets game. I watched about half of it from the second quarter to the third quarter. But I'm watching Tua and listening to Talking Heads where they were talking about how Dak Prescott, he's on the outer fringes of the conversation for MVP because, you know, guys like Tua and Pat Mahomes and, and, and Lamar Jackson are elevating their team and winning and doing things that the bus driver, Dak Prescott, is not able to do. And I challenge any Body out there to show me a quarterback over the last six weeks that has played better than Dak Prescott because I'm watching Tua throw <clears throat> two bad interceptions, two bad interceptions to what they term a bad team. They get the win 31 to what 10? 
throws a pick six, bad interception, right? But they say, this team's an elite team. Check the record and show me a team out there that they beat that's a good team. That's what I'm going to ask you. Show me that Tua has it on his resume there because he doesn't. We, on the other hand, of course, of course, we win, but we really lose. They tell you, well, Dak Prescott, you know, he doesn't do anything in the playoffs. He's a choker. But they don't remember that he had four TD passes against Tampa Bay and a rushing touchdown. Oh, well, that was just Tampa Bay. They're a bad team. They're not playing. Show me a team that plays playoff teams every week. And if you look at this Dallas Cowboy team, where they're at right now today versus where they were against San Francisco, you can look at this team and say they're going up from the fact that you got C.D. Lamb those first couple of games that was literally held to like 55 yards and under where we were like, damn, this dude ain't going to get paid. You looked at this offense that looked like ass ass where we called it the Texas toast or excuse me, the Texas burnt toast. The Texas burnt toast. And it looked like, what the hell are we doing? It was like Rashid talking about what the hell is Jason Garrett doing? Evidently, in the bye week, they must have tore that shit up. Mike McCarthy must have realized my ass is in the sling. Let me borrow some of Kellen Moore's book. You know, kind of like in The Water Boy, where he's sneaking at Henry Winkler's playbook. You know, he's using all his. That was Mike McCarthy. He just eliminated, with the exception of the Wildcat dumbass calls, he eliminated some of the crazy shit. They finally released the Kraken and let my man, here we go, do what Dak Prescott does back. Moving around in the pocket, bootlegging, letting it rip. You can't say that this Dak Prescott is the same Dak Prescott that was there against San Francisco. Miles away better. You can look at Brandon Cooks, who we said, everybody, the, the, the good old ESPN talking points. Brandon Cooks. Why'd they get this guy? He's a thousand yard receiver with everybody, but somehow Wag Dak can't hit this guy, can't find him. Is he still on the roster? And you look at Brandon Cooks right now, who's becoming a playmaker. Boom. Definitely an improvement for this Dallas Cowboys team. I know we're going to say these were trash teams. It was just the Washington Commanders. You mean the Washington Commanders that scored 31 points, not once but twice against the Eagles? And I'm not going to say in garbage time because they were leading the first game and the Eagles had to come back and tie it up and win it over time. That this Washington team scored with Sam Howe, who was leading the NFL in yardage, 62 points in two games against the Eagles. And they got what against the Cowboys? 10. I know it was just the New York stinking Giants. But you mean the New York Giants that got nine sacks on the Washington Commanders and bitch slapped them? How many times did they touch Dak Prescott? Thibodeau? I know he's a bum. He's a nobody. He's one of the top five in sacks. That's the bullshit that they tell you and waste your time. That's what they do. And see, in my life, I'm tired of wasting time. Rashid going reminded me of that fact that tomorrow is not promised. So don't waste your time with stupid shit. And stupid shit is what they give you. So as I go on about where the Cowboys are and they say the Cowboys don't have a chance, I look at Terrence Steele and I say, damn, Terrence Steele has the Michael Gallup-itis. Coming back from the ACL, he don't look like he got it right now. He's getting beat all over the field. That Terrence Steele now is getting down the field, getting confidence, double blocking people, knockout blocks. Had one of the best games that he's had this season. I know it was against the Commanders. We'll see when he goes against the elite competition. But that guy is in a much better place 
than he was against San Francisco. Then we have Father Time, the old guy, Tyrannosaurus Tyron, a guy who everybody said is past his time. Why do we still put him out on the field? Well, in comparison to the early games that he missed, along with Zach Martin, who missed time, along with Biotis, who missed time, and also with um, Tyler Smith missing the first two games, where our offensive line was literally juggling, juggling a new lineup, starting two undrafted rookie free agents in a game against the Cardinals. Against the Cardinals. Tyron Smith, they found the formula. Let's practice. Bubble wrap him. Put him in the corner. Keep everybody away from him till game time. That's the only thing we want you to do is play game time. And he's playing like the Tyron Smith of old. And you put him with one of the best guards. Surprisingly. Surprisingly. Who is getting into a groove. And Tyler Smith. You got one of the best left sides of football right now. We transitioned in an offense that we seemed like we did not know much of. Like I said, maybe we tore that shit up and went back to the things that we did well before. I can look and point to Jake Ferguson, who started the season, had a couple of drops in the end zone and things at first game. Who is coming on and playing really good. But even more than that, too, I see one of the draft picks. Maybe there's hope for our second round draft picks. Maybe there's hope for our second round draft picks because we've been ass ass except for Diggs and D-Law. We've got guys who aren't even in the league anymore in recent memory and like boss man fat. Schoonmaker is now part of tight end by committee. And we get another guy by Peyton Hendershot. So to look at this team and say, well, it's just the Cowboys. And listening to idiots who just look, and I, I don't want this to be taken. Ladies, don't, don't get mad at me when I say this. But Joy Taylor, her whole thing of before the Cowboys game, there was the question was, what can Dak Prescott and the Cowboys prove tomorrow? He can't prove anything to me. So what you're saying is your mind is made up and you can't change. You can't look and see anything. Because when I see what the Cowboys have done, literally demoralizing teams at home, I don't see teams getting blown out the water like this. To see Dak Prescott, because for some reason they think when Aaron Rodgers, when Aaron Rodgers, won his last MVP and had 36 TD passes and a 13-3 record that everybody else in the division was ass-ass. That he had six give-me games because the division sucked. And that the home field advantage team lost their first game, their first game, to San Francisco, a time that a team we beaten up and softened up, he was MVP. That Dak Prescott's 36 TD passes, the same number that Aaron Rodgers had that year, he was considered garbage. That a Josh Allen last year, who lost the same weekend at home that we did in the playoffs, after we went to Tampa Bay on a Monday night, on a short week go to San Francisco for our second road game, we still scored more points than Josh Allen and crew at home. Now, understand, I haven't looked at the chat right now because I'm going to church right now. Because I'm feeling the spirit of Rashid. And I'm trying to at least open your eyes to enjoy what you're seeing. The tear that the Dallas Cowboys are on right now, I don't know how long it's going to go. But for the idiot who said, I can't enjoy watching my team because we lost to a good team. You're wasting my time. And my time is precious. 
I'm going to enjoy seeing this because what I saw yesterday against the commander's team, a hated rival who beat us last year at the end of the season, was seeing a guy that we didn't really think that highly of when Trayvon Diggs went down in a Duran Bland pick off his fifth pick six, a NFL historic record. I'm going to enjoy that. Because something that the Cowboys have now that we haven't had is a defense that is game changers. And I will look at this defense and say this defense right now, even as much as Micah Parsons is being held on a regular basis, it is a damn shame that the NFL officials allow what they do against the Dallas Cowboys and specifically Micah Parsons, who is being face masked hands to the face, being bear hugged and everything else and does not get a single call and yet is still at 11 and a half sacks on the season. I'm going to enjoy watching that. The haters out there on your back and your dime are getting rich because you believe the bullshit that they're feeding you. And it is time to wake up and smell the coffee, smell the roses, and enjoy, and let what your eyes tell you is going on. When you see Dak Prescott doing the things that they're doing right now, when you see C.D. Lamb feasting, and then a Brandon Cooks, and they try and stop those two guys, and then you start seeing a Michael Gallup, who's now coming on, because that's another guy who we looked at and said, if we ever see them throw the ball, to Michael Gallup again, it'll be too soon. That guy is playing better than when we did against San Francisco. And Tony Pollard, another one of the trifecta of guys that were not performing well earlier part of the season. I don't know if he's now healthy. Maybe it's part of the offensive line now playing well. Maybe it's part of the receiving core that is now getting open down the field and they're stretching the field because Dak Prescott, unlike the crap that they tell you that Dak Prescott is a bus driver. I want you to understand that uh, pro football focus, <laughs> skip, 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 skip. The boys at pro football focus, you know, they watch a lot of football, skip. They, them, them boys know what they're talking about, skip. Those boys rated what Dak Prescott did last night. The four TD passes where he literally sliced and diced and ate <laughs> a turkey drumstick. <sighs> just ripped that thing out just like he ripped the heart out of the Washington Commanders. Rated a 97, 97 rating, the highest rating that pro football, the boys at pro football focus made for any quarterback against any team, any team that could have been Tom Brady against the Jets. That could have been Tom Brady against the Cleveland Doo-Doo Browns. That could have been uh, any quarterback. Nobody since 2007, not Drew Brees, not Phillip Rivers, not Eli Manning, not Tony Romo, not Peyton Manning. No quarterback out there has rated that high since 19, I'm sorry, 2007. But they're going to tell you, hey, it's just the Washington Commanders, a bad team. Well, you guess what? There's been a lot of teams that were bad out there that great quarterbacks played against. And not a single one, not a single one of them got a 97 since 2007. Explain that to me, talking heads. The Skip Bayless is that, you know, he's still, I still trust Cooper Rush better. 
the Colin Cow turds that, you know, hmm. The Joy Taylors, his disciple, will still tell you, well, you know, it doesn't, it does, it's just a bad team. 